coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thanks for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. Today, we're on trait 27, which is be careful. As we continue this 30-part podcast series on my book, Blue Collar Leadership and Teamwork, 30 Traits of High Impact Players. And if you're a new listener, I'm not reading you the book. I may be sharing some, some quotes or some key points from the chapter. And if you actually read the chapter, it's only going to take you six or seven minutes. I usually, these podcast episodes, I usually give you 20 or 30 minutes worth of uh, content. And again, I'm not reading you word for word from the book. If you want that, go get the book on audio or get the paperback copy. And it'll be very uh, condensed, good information. A lot of it that you're not going to hear today. And th that's not my intention here on, on this podcast series. Whenever I do a series on my book, the, the intention is not to give you the exact same content in the book. It's to give you some complimentary information to go along with the book. And you don't have to read the book. You can get a lot of value from the podcast itself without reading the book. Or someone can read the book and never hear the podcast and get a lot of value. But if you do the two, there's a synergy between the two. I, I've had a lot of people tell me they like to, when they know I have the series or they know I have the book, you know, if they know I've got both, they seem to like to read a chapter in the book, then go listen to the associated podcast, then read a chapter in the book, go listen to the associated, associated podcast. So today we're talking about being careful as a trait a character trait of high impact people. And I started off like I do mo most of my podcast in this series. You got two people to pick from. One of these two people are going to be on your team. Uh, all you know is one of them has a mindset where they, they master this trait of be careful, which means that they have a high level of awareness. Like we talked about last time. On, on the last uh, trait 26, be aware. But here we're talking about be careful. We're talking about being careful of other people who maybe don't have your best interests in mind. So you're talking about selecting a team member, possibly who, who is very aware, but then on top of that awareness, they've learned to, to be careful about how they treat others, but most importantly, how they're treated, what they allow other people to, to do to them emotionally, psychologically. Someone who's careful, they're, they're, they're very stable. They, they, they got a, a specific way they want to live their life emotionally, psychologically. Or you got another team member, Again, remember, you got two to pick from. All you know is one of them's careful, one of them's not. So the, the one who's not allows other team members to, to pull them down, play games with their emotions. You've seen these people. So you got one, one, one team member who is careful, doesn't allow that type of stuff to happen to them. They're stable. Because they're careful, they're also stable, meaning mentally. They're not crazy, emotional, all over the place, roller coaster. Because they have awareness from the last trait. But I'm, now I'm talking about on top of that, they're being careful. So you got one that's looking out to stay emotionally stable, psychologically stable. They're not letting the negative people influence them in negative ways. They're not letting the toxic people influence them in negative ways. That's one person. And then you got the other person who's not careful in that way. They let others yank them around. They let toxic team members pull them down, get them upset, frustrated, irritated, all those type things. So they're, they're not careful. 
They maybe associate with the wrong people in the wrong way, that sort of thing. Which team member do you want? Which team member do you want on your team? That's the only trait you know about them. Paul says you can have either one of these folks on your team. I'm only, only going to tell you one thing about them. One of them is careful. One of them is not. And, and as you, if you've been listening to this whole series, you start to see how all these traits, there's a synergy among these traits. They're completely separate, but they can be very, very powerful when you focus on each one of them individually. And, and then they merge together within you because you can't focus on individual traits as an individual person without all these traits being part of who you are as a whole person. And we all know we want the careful team member. That's who I'd want on my team. I want the one who's careful about who they hang around with, how they let others impact them. I want people who control themselves, control their mindset, avoid all the, the junk that's going on, on on low impact teams. So it's easy again to look out the window and see which person we'd want to associate with. But again, because of the blind spots we talked about on previous episodes, sometimes it's hard to look in the mirror, see which one are we. But let's talk about it. Let's break it down so you can understand it because I may not have given you good enough information there to know which person you'd want on your team but odds are you already know which one of those two i just described you want on your team you see high impact players this is why you need to be careful right here high impact players will lift you up low impact players will tear you down pull you down you know those people you know the people who want to lift you up and you know the people who want to pull you down. And again, they may not be bad people. They just want you to be like them. They want you to stay where they're at. Make the decisions they're making. Do the things they're doing. It makes them feel better when, when you're there with them instead of you're excelling out in life, leaving them behind because they don't want to pay the price. That's what I'm talking about. Be careful. High-impact team players if you want to be one of them, be careful. Toxic teammates with a low degree of character and with values that conflict with yours are much more likely to try and bring you down to their level rather than choose to join you at a higher level. These toxic teammates attempt to contaminate the team often with great success. And if that's happening, there's a toxic leader somewhere above that's allowing it to happen. If you got toxic teammates, there's a toxic leader above them. A lot of people don't realize that because the toxic teammate is really the problem. A lot of times the leaders, they don't see the leader as toxic because it ain't that that leader is not the one doing the things to them or whatever. But I'm here to tell you if there's a toxic teammate, there's a toxic leader because that toxic leader is allowing toxic teammates to contaminate their team. That's what makes the leader toxic. I'm putting a higher degree of responsibility, a higher level of responsibility on the leader. If that leader is allowing toxic teammates, they're a toxic leader because their leadership is contaminating the team. That's just a straight truth. And that leader may not have an awareness to understand that, that they, are the, they are the toxic team member alongside the, the toxic team member that they're allowing to be on the team. But they are. Whether they know it or not, whether they want to admit it or not. Low-impact players on their team don't realize they're a toxic leader. They, they know about their toxic teammate, but they don't understand the stuff I'm telling you. So the low impact leaders always pointing the finger at their toxic teammate, the one beside them. But high impact team members, that they point in the finger of responsibility, not blame, but the finger of responsibility at their toxic leader because they understand leadership at a high level. And they know that leader is responsible for what's being allowed to happen on the team. 
So be careful. Be careful of those teammates, toxic teammates, but also be careful not to be one of those toxic teammates. You don't want to be that person. You want to lift people up. You don't want to tear people down. If you're pulling people down, tearing people down, you're one of the ones that the other folks should be careful of. And if you have a blind spot and you hadn't raised your level of awareness relative to development, you could be the person pulling others down and you don't even know it. So when low-impact players see one of their own trying to rise to a higher level of effectiveness, they often use their influence to attempt to pull their teammate back down. You know, I can share a story from my days working in the manufacturing plants when I was on the front lines, factory worker, machine operator for about the first 10 years of my career from 1988 to 1998. As I was, you know, initially I was just one of the low impact players running around causing problems between me and my boss and me and my boss's boss and, and, uh, between the bosses, between me and my teammates, between other teammates, I was an instigator. I caused all kinds of problems. I loved it. I'm a better person now, <laughs> much better. But back then I, I called it playing games, you know, psychology, reverse psychology, mental games, all that stuff. I, I knew about influence, but I ain't never read these kind of books. Nobody had ever taught me any of this stuff. My character was, was terrible. I was one of those low impact players, but I remember most all of us were like that. And we argued, we got along and we got over it and we argued, we got along, we got over it and, you know, back and round and round we'd go and, and, uh, it's just the way it was. You, you hate a coworker for a week or two and then everything kind of smooths over and then you back friends at the break area hanging out. And then, then it's you and somebody else and them and somebody else. And it's just a constant churn of junk, what I call junk going on all the time. It's still like that in most blue collar organizations that don't do any development of the leaders or the frontline workforce. It's, it's the same thing going on because there's still people just like we were undeveloped people. Those are undeveloped people in most organizations today. Same way, not because they're bad people, but because they don't know what they don't know. And their leaders don't know what they don't know. But one thing we would all say, I said it, other people said it to me, but as I started growing, I started realizing it without ever being taught it. I started to understand what's happening again. I'm going to say it one more time. When low impact players see one of their own trying to rise to a higher level of effectiveness, they often use their influence to attempt to pull their teammate back down. You ever hear somebody tell you you're brown nosing the boss? Or you ever tell someone else they're brown nosing the boss? You know, we that's one of the terms we use back back in the day. I think you probably figure out what that means. But we, we said brown nosing, sucking up. Lots of other stuff that, that I ain't going to say on my podcast because I don't talk like that anymore. People talked about all, all types of things like that. They'd say, hey, you got next time you go in there, you need to get some knee pads. You know, here's a rag. You go and talk to the boss. Here's a rag. Clean that stuff off your nose when you come back out. Th that's, that's low impact people making jokes, making fun. In their mind, that's what they're doing, and, and it is in their mind, so it's their reality. I, I mean, I was one of those people. We thought it was funny. Everybody who said it usually laughed unless it was, you know, some stuff going on or people didn't like somebody or unless they understood what I'm about to teach you is going on because that's whenever somebody says that to you or you say that to somebody else, that when you hear that type of stuff, that's a low-impact player trying to keep people from rising to a higher level of effectiveness. They don't understand that. You know, it's somebody going in to talk to the boss or somebody, the boss just walked out and, and talked to somebody on, on, on their job. And then when they walk off, the other people start ridiculing the person who talked to the boss. Y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all know the picture I'm trying to paint. You probably have lived it or are still living it at this moment. What people are afraid of is the person talking to the boss might actually gain more influence than they have. They may build a relationship. They may not know how to articulate what I'm telling you at this moment. I didn't back in those days. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep everybody. If it's not us, 
we're trying to keep other people separated from the boss. We don't want them to, to go and grow, to build that relationship, to have influence. That's the key thing that's happening is those people are developing influence with the boss. So when I started growing, and again, it wasn't because I was reading all this kind of material because I wasn't yet. I was years away from discovering this type of content. But as I started growing, just through accidental growth, maturing, having a child, and having to become more responsible, I started seeing things different, as most of us do, slowly compared to when we become intentional about it. But I started supporting the bosses. Used to, I hated the bosses. I tried to get everybody else to hate them because I was one of those low-impact people. If I got, if there's five of us on the team and I can get everybody to hate the boss and we're going to all just stay together. If you're on my team, you're one of the five, you start growing and developing yourself. You start supporting the boss, building a relationship with the boss. You're going to have all kinds of influence with the boss. Next promotion, you're going to get the promotion. We're all going to be left behind. And we're going to say you were sucking up and brown nosing. That's how you got that job. That's what, that's what low impact people do because they don't know any better. So when I started climbing up the ladder of influence, so to speak, everybody was always ribbing on me. I just had to get used to it. That's just the way it was. Everybody, all throughout the plant. There goes a rising star. There goes a shooting star. Always saying something. So I had to be careful. I had to be careful who I associated with and what kind of information I shared with people because those low-impact players are going to use it against me. They're going to use it to turn other people against me. And as I was moving up, I started moving up positionally within the company. I had to be able to influence all the people, as many as possible. Some of them I couldn't. We didn't have shared values. But that was my mission because I was usually in a, like a support type role. I was responsible for things all over the plant, but nobody really reported to me. I had to have a lot of influence. It's one of the reasons I learned so much about influence before I ever read any of these books that taught me about influence. Because to be effective in my job, to become a high-impact team player, I didn't call it that in, in those days, but that's what I was becoming and what I was. I had to learn to be careful. Because people who started to see me trying to rise to a higher level, they were trying to pull me back. And they'll do it a million different ways. If they can't get it to happen one way, they'll go a different direction. If they can't get one person to join them, they'll go try to get another person to join them. But the key is, are you, as you grow and develop, you got to be careful and be aware of all this. But at the same time, you got to look in that mirror. Are you lifting others up or tearing others down? Are you lifting others up or pulling others down? How does the answer to that question to impact your influence. If you're one of those people still out there commonly or frequently ever telling somebody they brown nosing or they sucking up or whatever, I want you to know this. You're tearing somebody down. You're trying to pull somebody down with you. You ever notice people in a higher level position or people of high character? Those people, they don't to the they, they don't say people have high character no matter what level they're at. They don't talk about people sucking up and brown nose and all that stuff. They don't get into that mess like I used to get into. And and, and bosses, let's say there's two bosses, two bosses above you. So when you're talking to your boss, some of your teammates may say you're brown nosing or sucking up. But your boss's boss doesn't tell you that because they're not trying to hold you back. It's your teammates trying to hold you back. But your boss's boss and other bosses at his or her level, his peer level, when they're talking to their boss, that boss may do the same thing to them. It doesn't stop just because you get to a higher level. But where you focus your negative energy, it changes as you get to a higher level because usually 
it's, it's amongst your peers because your peers are the ones that threaten you. Your peers are the one that's going to leave you behind potentially. Your peers are the ones that's going to climb to another level if they develop their influence and you don't. So there's lots of ways to see this. Number one thing you got to know is be careful and lift others up. Don't pull them down. People who pull people down do not have a high degree of influence with, with high impact, high character people. High impact players absolutely have values that are much different from average, from the average players and the low impact players on their team. High impact players have values that separate them from the pack big time. They are going to get ridiculed, but they ain't going to worry about it. They're going to move. They're going to move on. They're going to continue the mission. Their mission, growing and developing themselves, the team's mission, and the organization's mission. They'll choose to lead teammates when necessary, and they'll choose to follow teammates when necessary because they ain't worried about who's leading, who's following. They're worried about accomplishing the mission. When I'm leading a team, I'll, I'll lead if no one else wants to lead. If somebody else wants to lead and they want to go where the team wants to go, needs to go, should go, I'll follow. I don't care. But I ain't going to follow someone in the wrong direction, I'm going to tell you that. I'm either going to influence the team to follow me or I'm going to get off the team. But I grow and develop myself. That way I know where I'm headed. I got my true north figured out. It allows me to operate within the team, within the organization, effectively. Which may mean I leave the team or the organization. Because if I want to be highly effective, I'm not going to be part of a team where I can't be highly effective. So if my values grow and change to the level that I can't be effective in my organization, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to stay. And let others hold me back, no matter how awesome they may be, no matter how much I may like them, no matter how much they're paying me. I ain't letting somebody else hold me back. Why? Because I'm being careful. I'm being careful about leading myself well in the direction I want to go, and I want to align myself with teams and organizations that value who I am and what I bring to the table. I don't want to have to be holding back because my leaders want me to hold back because I'm at a higher level than they are. Just be careful. You play the game of a low-impact leader, you'll find yourself there 5, 10, 20 years from now, and you'll be left behind. Not by them, but, but left behind by the life you could have had, the life you could have lived. You want to be a high-impact player, you need to be on a high-impact team. That's why leaders who want a high-performance team, they should be doing book studies like I teach you in Episode 305. If you haven't listened to Episode 305, go check it out. That's how you can you can take these books. A lot of my books are written specifically for that purpose. And I teach you all about that in that episode. If you got a team and you want to build a high performance team, you need to read some of some of my books, figure out which ones you like, which ones you wish they would align with, start teaching them. Teach them through the book study using episode 305. See, high impact players are always in control of themselves and their future and know how to avoid being controlled. You know, I call it, I learned from John Maxwell a long time ago about the law of the lid. It talks about when you outgrow the leadership level of the leaders above you, you start to bang your head on their leadership lid. And you know it because you feel it. You get frustrated. They won't do all the things you know they really ought to do, but they're the leader and they don't have to do it. So if you know they should be doing things they're not doing because you've learned and grown, you've read a lot, you've lived a lot, you've read uh, experiences from others who've already been through all this, they're educating you through their experience and you know what's going on. If you choose to let others hold you back, you're choosing to be controlled. You're choosing to be held back. Be careful. You'll end up living a life you didn't want to live. 
But if you're a high impact leader and you're building a high performance team, the the people who are being careful, they're just being careful to protect the team that you've built. And if y'all get a team member on the team who doesn't fit, being careful means giving feedback to the boss or trying to help them grow and develop that person. Use your influence to help them get on get on the train to align themselves. Because when you get new people in, let's say you've been doing book studies for five, ten years. Everybody, you got a high performance team, you got a high impact leader. Everybody's squared away. So then you got to take this high impact trait to a to a different context. Now I want to be careful that I don't allow somebody to come contaminate my team. We get a new person in that never been a part of anything like this. We may have seen, or the boss may have seen, they got a lot of potential, but it's undeveloped potential. So we bring them in, and and they're rough. They're like a diamond in the rough, and they're going to stay rough unless we develop them. So we got to make sure we do all the right things to develop them. But if they're not being developed, that's where we really got to be careful that we don't keep them on the team longer than they need to be on the team. Because you see, sometimes people say, well, people can't change. Let me tell you this. I read this on LinkedIn the other day. I've heard it before, but it, I don't remember where I heard it, but I read it the other day that kind of refocused my mind on it because someone on LinkedIn had said something to somebody about, you know, some people can't change. And the person who replied, they got it exactly right. If you got a hundred people in front of you, a hundred people can change. Every single person on this planet can change if they want to. Doesn't mean they will, but anybody at any time can change. It's just a simple choice that a person has to make. So once you're trying to grow and develop people, if you got a high performance team, you bringing in some new folks, once you fully understand First, you got to know they can change, but as soon as you know they don't want to change, if you're being careful, it's time for them to go. You got to know it. Your teammates got to know it. Your boss got to know it. And then who, whoever, the boss, I assume, if you can't improve them, you got to remove them. You guys, as a team, have to figure out how long is that process. How long do we try to improve them? before we remove them, if they're unwilling to improve. Be careful. As a result of, of uh, being controlled, high-impact players have options, or, or excuse me, of not being controlled. High-impact players have options that people of lesser character will not have. So what I'm talking about here is as a result of controlling yourself, all these traits and a whole lot more, high impact players have options that people of lesser character will not have. That's what it's all about. Freedom and options. You want to be careful that you do not let people take away your freedom and options. So I want to share a quote with you from Rob Waldman to close out today's episode. He says, it's the relationships we build and the people whom we trust that give us the courage to take risks and make ourselves better. That's a, that's a great quote from Rob. One more time, close us out. It's the relationships we build and the people whom we trust that give us the courage to take risks and make ourselves better. All about relationships. Common sense is high-impact players are going to build better quality relationships than low-impact players. So you need to focus on developing all of these traits and a whole lot more. You're going to have more freedom, more options. Your life's going to get better. You're going to find yourself on a better team, in a better organization, whether you all improve the team and improve the organization or whether you remove yourself from the team or the organization and go find a better team and a better organization. There's all types of content texts. All different ways to view these traits. The key is you learn the principle within the trait. And you make good use of it. 
So be careful. Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.